Well, thank you very much, Elder Perry, and good evening, everyone. I am really honored to join you tonight as we pay tribute to Harris and Amanda Simmons and Scott and Jessely Anderson. And I wish I could summon the eloquence that Elder Perry had, but let me add just a few comments, starting with some observations about Zions Bank. I don't think that you can overstate how important Zions Bank is to Utah's economy. Simply put, access to credit is the lifeblood of business and economic development. And year in, year out, Zions Bank ranks as one of America's top providers of financing and banking services to small and medium-sized businesses in our state. Now, like Elder Perry, I too have had the privilege to serve on the Zions Bank Board for the past decade, and I'm here in part representing my fellow Zions Bank directors. I can tell you that this great banking franchise is built to last. And it's built to last because it's all about leadership. Now, leadership always matters, but it matters most when times get tough. We now know that America, America's financial system came very close to collapse back in September of 2008. Now, community banks like Zions Bank certainly did not cause the housing bub bubble and most certainly didn't cause housing and commercial property, commercial real estate values to decline by 30% or more from peak to trough. But the so-called Great Recession that followed threatened the survival of even America's best managed and best run banks. And I had the opportunity from a front row seat on the bank board to watch and to marvel at how Harris, Scott, and the entire Zions Bank team responded decisively, proactively, and effectively. Today, Zions Bank is back on its mission, serving customers and serving our community. And it's clearly not a coincidence that Utah's economy is also rebounding because the answer to the question, how are things going with Zions Bank, is the same as the answer to the question, how is Utah's economy? Now, I've also noticed over the years, and I think my fellow bank board directors uh, have observed this as well, that Harris and Scott rarely say I when they're speaking about either the banks or their own accomplishments. And I suspect that that's because these two great men don't think in terms of I. They think we. They think team. And as Elder Perry has said, they build great management teams. In fact, the two of them are a team. So when things go well, they give credit to the we and not to the I. And things usually do go well for Zions Bank. They instinctively know that we thinking builds trust and brings out the best in the people on the team. It's principled leadership, it's what empowers the team at Zions Bank, and it comes from the top, from Harris and Scott. Now, some of you also know that Harris has also served on the Questar Corporation Board for over two decades now. What you probably don't know is that while he was dealing with the impact of the Great Recession on Zions Bank Corp and Zions Bank, Harris was also serving as Questar's lead director, the board's lead director, lead independent director from 2008 to 2010. And thus, he was leading the independence of the Questar, independent directors of the Questar board through the process that ultimately led to the decision to split the company and spin off our non-regulated EMP business without question the most momentous decision in Questar's 84-year history. It wasn't just that Harris helped lead the board to consensus. It was how we got there. Again, it was principled leadership from Harris, keeping all of us focused on doing the right thing. The QEP spinoff in July 2010 was the right thing for Questar shareholders, employees, and customers. But Harris also helped us see that it was also the right thing 
for Utah. That's because with a spinoff, the new Questar Corporation, now led by Ron Gibson, and uh, I might add, in my judgment, the best management team in the natural gas industry today, Questar has returned to its roots as a customer-centric utility focused on serving the 900,000 homes and businesses in our state that depend on natural gas for heat and clean burning fuel. Harris, I don't think we ever adequately thanked you for your leadership of the Questar board during that crucial time. And I know that we have not adequately thanked Amanda. Amanda, we all know that family is number one for Harris. He reminds us of that frequently. And we know that you are the quintessential partner and spouse, the one who enables your high achieving husband to succeed the way he does. We also know that you're a role model mom doing the heavy lifting at home, in particular when Harris is taking care of business. So Amanda, this night is also about honoring you. Now, speaking of heavy lifting, Elder Perry and Lane have spoken tonight of Scott and Jessely Anderson's legendary work in our community. Let me give you some data to put that into context. Zion's Bank Board policy requires Scott annually to disclose to the board the names of the charities and the nonprofit entities that he and Jessely are involved with in our community. Get this. In January, Scott disclosed that he and Jesse Lee are active in 48 Utah charities and nonprofit organizations. And of those 48, Scott and Jesse Lee combined serve on the board or in a similar advisory role in 23. How, how is that possible? How, how is that possible? Some of us whine about two or three board assignments. Now, I know Harris has a theory. His theory is that there must be at least two Scott Andersons and at least two Jesse Lee Andersons. Scott and Jesse Lee, it's impossible to put into words the gratitude we all feel for all you do for our community and our state. Now, there were many, many people who wanted the honor that I've had tonight to speak but obviously the chamber simply did not have the time for everyone. My thanks to Lane for giving me this opportunity, and now what I'd like to ask is that you turn your attention to the monitors. Let's hear from a few more from our community, talk about Harris, Scott, Amanda, and Jessalee. 